Welcome back to On Shape, and today we're going to be looking at activity 1.3.3, constraining a sketch. Now much of today's activity will just reviewing the tools we have available and quickly applying them. We've already used some of these, as we've already seen some of our constraints in the form of dimensions, and in our last assignment, the trammel base, as we use vertical and horizontal constraints. But today let's start by going to the Create tab and creating a document. We're going to call this one Activity 1.3.3. And we'll click OK. Now before we begin, let's take a review of what constraints we have available to us. To do that, let's go ahead and go into the sketch mode. We'll choose sketch, and I'm going to choose the front plane, and I'll change my view to front. This menu provides our constraints. We have an option for a coincidental constraint, or the coincident constraint. This will connect a point to a line, or a line to a point. The concentric constraint. This will allow two circles to share the same center. The parallel constraint will make two lines parallel. The tangent constraint will make a line tangent to a circle, or it will cause the line to touch the circle at a single point. The horizontal constraint will make two points horizontal to each other. The vertical constraint will make two points vertically aligned to each other. The perpendicular constraint will make two lines at right angles or perpendicular. The equal constraint will make two lines or shapes identical. The midpoint constraint will provide a midpoint. Normal will cause a line to, move, to follow the radius at a right angle. We won't really look at pierce, but we will look at fix, which means to lock a point. Mirror or symmetric will duplicate a shape. And then a curvature can create a curve. For today's assignment, we're going to create the same shape described in activity 1.3.3. To do that, we're going to start with a line tool. We're going to start here and draw a line directly across. This has an implicit constraint. An implicit constraint means a constraint that exists even though we did not add it, and that is a horizontal constraint. We're going to go straight up. If you'll look to the right of the mouse, you'll see that there's a vertical constraint already present. We're going to move from there over to the right. And then we're going to create the shape that we saw. Now as we come up here, we're asked to do a shape that's not quite aligned. So there won't be an implicit constraint. And from this point on, we won't add constraints. We'll simply try to get the shape approximately correct. We now have an enclosed form. Now as we move through these, there's two types of constraints we could use to fix our shape. One is a dimensional constraint. We've used dimensional constraints as we've dimensioned our objects to make sure they're the right shape and size. Anytime we add a dimension, we are constraining the sketch to that dimension. For this assignment, we're going to review geometric constraints. A geometric constraint would be using one of these tools to manipulate our form. So the first thing we want to do is to take lines and make them parallel, specifically our line here and here. So I'll use the parallel constraint and click on both lines to assure that they are indeed parallel. The next thing we want to do is constrain our shape form to look accurate. We know this line is perpendicular, as should this one. So we'll choose the perpendicular constraint and apply it to both forms. We see the shape shifts, but it's not quite accurate. We know that this side should also be equal to this one. So we'll add a horizontal constraint to keep them connected. So by adding this constraint, we should ensure that these will both be horizontal to each other. We also want this to be a horizontal line. The next piece is we need this side to be equal to this side. So we'll use the equal constraint to make these lines equal. We don't seem to quite have the right shape yet, but we're close. We'll make sure that this line is equal to this line. We'll reapply a horizontal constraint to this point in this point, it should draw it down. I'm going to right click and exit the horizontal constraint. You'll notice I should be able to still move my shape to make it look more accurate. As long as the form itself does not violate any of the constraints. So you should have this basic form once you're done. 